What's the deal, baby? Y'all to know it is the big boss hog, boss dog, K-Po, through the door, here to talk this boxing. What's good with y'all boys, man? It's a cold day, but it's a beautiful day down here in this Texas. Before I get my soliloquy, I'm boss hog, K-Po, through the door, from Houston, Texas. If you're new to my channel, like, comment, and subscribe, and run for no smoke. And, uh, man, I just pray for everybody, man. Uh, you know, I hope everybody have a good day. You know, and if you're having a bad day, just remember, Bad times don't last, good people do. Um, Terrence Crawford tried to be on Jamel Charlo here. Let's talk about it. Now, Terrence Crawford has made comments about Jamel Charlo, and this even, you know, they have history. You know, Terrence Crawford said he, after he beat Errol, he going to whoop Jamel Charlo. You know what I'm saying? Which, <laughs> you know, we just going to be real. You know, that ain't going to happen. Terrence Crawford ain't gonna get in the ring with no Jamel Charlo. He ain't getting in the ring with Errol. He not getting in the ring with Jamel Charlo. But um, basically, um, you know, Terrence Crawford Mason made a statement saying that Jamel Charlo is jealous of him and Errol, and he not on a level. In which Jamel Charlo responded with saying, "Man, don't mention my name if you ain't trying to fight." You know what I mean? Um. So there's a lot of talking from both parties, you know. But the thing that I find cap is you got the bud buddy signing off on that. You know, they're like, oh, uh, 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 Jamel Charlo, you know, he lost. Terrence Crawford is 38 and 0. That's casual talk. You being undefeated as a fighter does not mean that you're an elite fighter. We just saw Zuda Ramirez, who's 44 and 0, get in there with Bivol and got his ass whooped. Bivol, I, I don't even think, got 30 fights. And Bivol whooped Zerto Ramirez's ass. So it don't mean nothing. I could go, I could keep going. You know what I'm saying? So you being undefeated. Errol fight Mikey. Mikey was 38 no. Errol, Errol had like 20 some fights. And Errol whooped that boy. Punished him. So like I said, man, at the end of the day, it's not about your O or wins or losses that you have it's about the caliber of fighters you fighting you understand if jamel charlo has fought top competition at 144 i mean 154 my bad i stacked division a division where from top to bottom is anybody can win belts from jamel charlo down to from door to extra lubin to tony hester they could i mean they could you know what i'm saying so his, he's more accomplished because he has the better resume. He has the better opponents. He has more adversity. You know what I'm saying? That he been through. That's what makes him great. That's what makes him a better fighter or a more accomplished fighter than Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, yeah, he 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 became under speed at 140. And that's a decent accomplishment. But degree of difficulty. Who was the killer at 140 that he fought? Don't I wait? Now, I'm, like, like I said yesterday, the best fight I've seen Terrence Crawford fight in his career was against Victor Postal. Why? Because he didn't fight off a motion. He stuck to the game plan. You actually saw strategy. You actually saw a game plan. He wasn't just fighting off emotion. Terrence Crawford outdogs his opponents. That's what he does. But the opponents... Are, are not on his level. So what tends to happen is they're not on any elite level. They're not on no near the elite fighters level. They trash. That's just keep it a thousand. So what Terrence Crawford does, you know, is he just outdogs him. The only fight that I give him credit for where he sat there and said, mm, I'm going to stick to the game plan as a Victor Poster fight. That's it. And then 147, all them the fight is either, either washed up at 147 or they just trash all together. So, like I keep saying at the end of the day, how is people jealous of you, bro? Jamel Charlo is a bigger star than you are. You're not even doing the numbers that Jamel Charlo are doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, how is Jamel Charlo jealous of you? And you got one belt that you've been holding on to for four years. I don't understand that. 
Well, I will say this. A lot of people talk with Jamel Turner. Tony Harrison talked. What happened to him? Flatline. Hadley talked. What happened to him? Flatline. Okay? Man, a lot of them boys be talking before the fight. And then Charlo flatline him. <laughs> so if Bud, which I, I don't think he, I, I know he ain't going to fight no Jamel Charlo. That's a death sentence. For starters, Bud is defensively irresponsible. He going to think he could get in there, I'm a, I'm a dog. Because Bud, Bud defense is not even that good, bro. Like, But I'm not gonna say so he don't have no defense, but it's not good enough to elude and avoid punches from Jamel Charlo. Now why I think Bud had some successful rounds against Charlo? Yeah. I do. But as soon as Charlo line him up, he gonna put him down. That's it. That's what it is. Like I told you, everybody that didn't talk. As we tell you, Jamel Charlo got flatlined, sleep. They laying on the ground. They drunk. They can't walk on their own. And that's what's gonna, and that's gonna happen to Bud. I've seen him. I've seen Bud hurt by less competition. I've seen Jamel Charlo. What he do to people when they get to talking too much? Flatline. But the Bud Buddy's gonna try to tell you, oh man, he he lost. He lost to Hatley, and then he lost to Castano. <laughs> Why is he undisputed at 154? <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Why is he undisputed at 154? If he lost to these people, oh yeah, he lost. Why he undisputed? He couldn't have lost if he undisputed. Yeah, he lost to Tony Harrison. But that was a contested loss. It could have went either way. It could have said it was a draw. But they said he lost. And what did he do? He immediately came back, fought that, you know what I'm saying? Wanted to smoke with Buddy. Tony Harrison, the one who prolonged it. Then Charlo, they end up fighting. Charlo knocked that boy out. Rap. Castano, he was talking too. Charlo knocked that boy out. Made that boy fall to his knees like he was proposing or something. I'm telling you this. That boy, Charlo, is different. And I'm just talking about stylistically. Let's not even talk about the praise. Let's talk about stylistically. You got Charlo who's a boxer puncher, right? Right? Because y'all forget. Charlo could box. When he was on the Randy Shields, he was known as a boxer. Everybody used to talk about Big Charlo being the puncher. Right? Everybody's talking about Big Charlo being the puncher. And then when Lil Charlo left Ronnie Shields, he went to Derek James, and Derek James taught him to start sitting on his punches. That's why he started knocking niggas' heads off their body. Because of that teaching of how to punch. Derek James is a teacher. Right? So he was able to teach Jamel Charlo how to punch. And he landed that, man, that boy. Ever since he got there, Jay, he been knocking boys out, souls out their body, hitting harder, everything. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. But don't get it twisted. Jamel Charlo can run, rewind back to his time. So you got Jamel Charlo, who's a boxer puncher, who got a strong jab. Everything on him is strong. You got Terrence Crawford, who's a true 135-pounder, going up to 154 to fight Jamel Charlo. You telling me, you telling me he going to knock out Jamel Charlo when Jamel Charlo's the bigger, stronger fighter who can box as well? Man, stop playing, bro. All that stuff, Terrence Crawford can switch. Yeah, he can switch. And I said that if they fight, Terrence Crawford would have some rounds where he was successful. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as soon as Charlo line him up, it's over. I've seen Bud get hurt by less competition. Dudes who ain't who ain't even punchers like that. Bud that got hurt. 
I'm telling you, it's going to be another. It's going to be like the. Uh, I love Texas. It's going to be another uh, Hatley. The Charlo versus Hatley fight. You going to see that boy Bud laying on the ground, sleep. Y'all remember Charles Hatley. He was doing all that talking and all before the fight. Talking about he going to whoop Charlo. Charlo want to fight him. Charlo scared of him. You know, they started a little Houston versus Dallas war a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, boop. Turn off the lights. That boy was asleep. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going to happen to, to Bud. But I respect Bud for, you know, like being, you know, he he's standing on his own 10, you know. He talking. He talking, but... He talking to try to build his own profile. See, we ain't we ain't we ain't blind, man. Bud doing this stuff so he can build himself up. You know what I'm saying? Cause he know he ain't as big as Charlo. He know he ain't as big as Arrow. He know he ain't as big as these other fighters. He know that. He not blind. So he he going at them. He going at everybody that got a name. That's what he doing. He going at everybody who has a name. So he. So people could be can tune in to him. Oh, who is this dude talking? That's all it is, bro. We ain't blind. We ain't stupid. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Bud can continue to cap out he wants to. He know the real. He look at himself in the mirror. He know that. So like I keep saying, man, at the end of the day, Bud need to stay away from Jamal Charlo, bro. Just leave him alone, bro. Just stop talking. I'm telling you, that boy gonna. I'm telling you, that boy gonna knock the soul out of Bud's body. Boss gone.